Amen. Amen. We'll raise our hallelujah. The king is alive. The king is alive. Uh, there's that, uh, a movie that uh, came out a couple of years ago. <clears throat> that movie was entitled God is Not Dead. God is surely not dead. He's alive. And because he's alive, you and your family and all your loved ones will continue to excel in this life. Amen and amen and amen. Well, I want to welcome uh, you all, uh, the Community Life uh, Church family. I want to welcome you all. I want to welcome those of you who are watching from different parts of the world, uh, all those of you who are watching from uh, the U.S., uh, those of you who are watching from Ohio, uh, those of you who are watching us from Connecticut, those who are watching us from Dallas, uh, from LA, from New York, uh, from San Francisco, and uh, this week we also got a message from a place called Topek. I think that is in uh, Kansas, uh, Canada. You're also most uh, welcome. Thank you so much for uh, uh, tuning in today. Uh, those of you who are watching from Europe, Germany, United Kingdom, uh, you're most uh, welcome. Those of you who are watching us from Asia, that's Malaysia, uh, Dubai, Oman, you're most welcome. Uh, those of you who are watching us from different parts of Africa, uh, uh, Congo, Burundi, Rwanda, Kenya, Ethiopia, Tanzania, uh, Gabon, Cote d'Ivoire, um, and any other part of the world if i have missed welcoming you officially please drop us a comment in the comment section and let us know where you're watching from so that we can uh, continue to uh, welcome you but also to celebrate with you you are most welcome well uh last week uh i ended by telling you uh, well we, i've been talking about hope i've been talking about hope uh, for the last so many weeks, we've been talking about hope. And uh, we've talked about so many things. But uh, last week, uh, specifically, we dwelt on two things. One was uh, the helmet of hope and uh, the word or the term salvation. And we found out what that uh, meant or what that means uh, in that context and brought it into our context. And I ended by um, telling you how to put on the helmet of hope and today i want to pick up from there and uh, i want to end our series today i want to end our series hope over fear today i want to thank you so much for joining us for the last uh, seven eight weeks you have been with us you've been journeying with us uh, in the series i hope that you've been blessed and uh, please drop us in the comment section type a comment in there tell us how much this series have blessed you. I'm going to say that one more time. Please, in the comment section, just go ahead and type a comment right now. You can even do it right now. Let us know how you have been blessed. Let us know what you have learned. Let us know how you're going to practice it. Tell us um, how your family members have been touched by this series. Uh, please let us know because that helps us to be able to serve you better, to be able to pray for you better. And so today I want to pick up from there. And I also want to let you know that all our sermons are on YouTube. So if you just go um, to our YouTube channel, uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, what do you call that thing? The, uh, the handle uh, should be on the screen right over there. Please uh, go to our YouTube channel. You will be able to find all those sermons. If you have missed any of them, you will be able to find all our sermons and you can even be able to uh, share them with your friend. Uh, even on our Facebook, uh, they, they're all there. You can be able to uh, run through, scroll through, and you should be able to find those messages there. Next week, we begin a brand new series, and it's a surprise. I want to encourage you to, uh, again... Uh, invite a friend uh, to our online church. Invite a friend. We are right now in, um, uh, on a campaign. Everybody bring one. So everybody bring one. Bring one person online. And uh, uh, we know that uh, God is going to be able to bless them. So we encourage you to uh, bring. Uh, when we share our, our links, please share them with your friends. And uh, we'll be very happy to do church with them 
church online with them. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Now, let me, uh, let me pick up from where we stopped uh, last week. Now, last week we talked about two things. We talked about the helmet of hope and we talked about uh, salvation. Now, the reason why we put on the helmet is basically, I told you last week, is to be able to protect our mind and um, uh, to protect our thoughts. And uh, how do you do that? And that's where I really want to pick up from. How do you protect your mind? How do you protect your mind? Because the mind, everything begins in the mind. And I told you last week that if you win the battle um, in your mind, you'll be able to win the battle at your school. If you win the battle in your mind, you'll be able to win the battle in marriage. If you win the battle in your mind, you'll be able to win your financial battle. If you win the battle in the mind, you'll be able to win the, 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 the battle of luck. If you win the battle of the mind, you'll be able to win every battle in this life. So, and I also told you that the devil is not after what you own because he always goes for the primary. The devil goes for the primary because he knows that once he gets the primary, then all other things, the secondary, is sorted. And that's what he does. He's a very smart devil. He goes for the primary and he gets the secondary. All right? So, uh, the mind is the one thing that the devil really, really looks for. So, how can you protect your mind? I'm going to give you three things today as we wind down our series. Uh, number one, how, how do you protect your mind? All right? How do you protect your mind? Number one, feed your mind with truth. Feed your mind with truth. At the beginning of a series, uh, this series, I talked about uh, the truth versus facts. Truth versus facts. Now, uh, the facts change. Facts change. But the truth never changes. The word of God is truth. And the word of God will never change. The, the fact will change. For example, uh, the fact is, uh, is that today... There is a crisis. That's a fact. But the truth is, is that, you know, tomorrow, uh, there is a brighter tomorrow coming. Because the word of God uh, says, for I know the plans that I have for you in Jeremiah 29, 11. Now I'm talking about the truth. Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, I know the plans that I have for you. He says, these are great plans. He says, these plans, he says, they are, are so good that they are to give you an expected end, a great end. Now, this is not the end. This is not the end of the world. But the, the scripture talks about a great end. That is the truth. So the fact is, there's a crisis in the world. But the truth is, there is a good expected God end that is coming for all of us. Amen. So, uh, facts will change, but the truth will never change. And the word of God is truth. So, how do you protect your mind? You don't feed your mind with facts. You feed your mind with the truth. And the truth is basically the word of God. Uh, John chapter 8, verse 31. John chapter 8, verse 31 and verse 32 says, So Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, Jesus, and I know that wherever you are, you believe in uh, God. Jesus said uh, to the Jews who believed in him, if you abide in my word, and uh, you are, then you are truly my disciples. Let me say that again. Uh, Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. Verse 32. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now, many times we quote this portion of scripture, but when we're quoting the scripture, we are basically quoting verse 32. Verse 32 says, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But let's go back to verse 31. Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, if you abide in my word. Now that word if occurs over 300 times in the Bible. It's, it's a conditional clause. He says, if you abide in my word, that's the condition. The condition for you to be able to, set, to be set free is to abide in the word of God. All right? The, the promise is that you will be set free. But the condition is you have to abide in the word of God. If you abide, if you stay. That word also means to stay. If you stay in the word of God, then it says you are truly my disciples. 
So the number one uh, prerequisite of being a disciple of Jesus Christ is to abide, to stay in the word of God. When you do that, then that's the number one uh, prerequisite of being a disciple. Then it says, and you will know. When you abide in the word, you will know. When you read the word, you will know. You will know. When you study the word of God, you will know the truth. And the truth that you know will set you free. Now, that word, the word know there is not to know for the sake of having knowledge. That word know is actually a doing word. Is that when you abide in the word of God, you are his disciple. And if you are his disciple, then you will do the word of God. The, the other word for that word no is the word do because it's a doing word. You will do the word of God. And when you do the word of God, then you will be set free. That's what that scripture means. When you, when you abide in the word, you will do the word of God. You will, know, you will know you will do the word of God. And then you will be set free. Now, Jesus is basically talking about his word here. He says, when you stay in my word, you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. And like I've said, that word know is not just acquiring knowledge. That word know is a practical word. So let me give you an example. Uh, let's use the example of giving. The scripture talks about giving. And the scripture says, when you return to me the tithe and offerings, he says, I'll open up the windows of heaven. That is in the book of Malachi, all right? That's giving. Now, you have read the word of God. Now, to read is not necessarily to know in this context. To know in this context would be now then to go ahead and do what the word of God is saying, and that is to be able to pay your tithe and offerings. Now, when you do that, then now you will experience the blessing of God. He says the truth will set you free. So the freedom there is that when you begin to, when you tithe, all right, what you have will be protected. That means now you're moving into the truth of the word of God. You will see the blessing coming. The truth will set you free. You will be set free from lack. You will be set free from the devourer. Why? Because you are, you don't just know in the, it's not just head knowledge, but now you are going ahead and practicing the word of God. So, uh, if you abide in the word of God, then you will do what? You will be his disciples. You will be Christ's disciples. When you are his disciples, you will begin to practice his word. When you practice his word in all aspects, then you will be set free. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 119, verse 147. All right. I'll read. I, I rise early before the sun is up. I cry out for help and put my hope in your words. I put my hope in your words. He says, I rise before the sun is up. It's David, I cry for help and I put my hope in your word. And I began by telling you that God's word is truth. How do we, how, how are we able uh, to protect our minds? Number one is to feed on the word of God. Now, there are over 7,000 promises in the word of God. Over 7,000. Can you imagine? How could we ever lose hope when there are over 7,000 promises that give us hope in the word of God? So today, if you don't have hope, just put your head in the word of God. And you will, as you study, you will begin to bump into these hope-giving promises. The word of God that will give you and I hope. Now, Psalm 119, verse 97, it says... Psalm 119, verse 97, it says, Oh, how I love your instructions. That word instructions also means word. Uh, oh, how I love your word. I think about them all day long. I think about your instructions all day long. I think about your word all day long. In other words, when I study your word, when I read your word, then what really fills my mind is your word all day long. Your word is in my mind. I am moving around with your word. Let me tell you, uh, last week I told you that, you know, there's so many things that are happening that keep bombarding our minds. So, but you see, when we read the word of God, if we make it a habit to read the word of God, then what that means is that, you know, all day long, his word will be in us. So number one, how do you protect your mind? You protect your mind by feeding your mind 
with the truth. And we are saying that the truth is the word of God. Last night I was watching news. I've not watched news in a long time. So yesterday I said, you know what, let me just, let me just watch news. So I watched news last night and uh, everything that came up was very bad news. Bad news. This one is killing the other. You know, uh, the virus is still killing people. All sorts of things. You know, uh, couples are fighting and people are fighting. Uh, you know, all sorts of things happening. Bad news. So, you know, at some point in the news, I just walked away. I said, you know what? This is not good. There's nothing good here. And that is what, you know, I was feeding with my mind. But the moment I walked away, I walked away. There's no, there's no good news right now in the news. There's bad news all over the place. But the good news is that we have a good news. And the good news is the word of God. So how do you protect your mind? Number one, you feed your mind with the word of God. Number two, how do you protect your mind? Number two, you free your mind from bad thoughts. Free your mind from bad so thoughts. Actually, number two is connected to number one. When you feed your mind with the word of God, what you're actually doing is that you're freeing your mind from bad thoughts. You're putting in the word of God and the bad thoughts are going out. So number two is connected to number one. Free your mind from bad thoughts. And how do you free your minds from bad thoughts? When you study the word of God, you are freeing your mind with bad thoughts. Our minds are corrupt. Our minds have so many bad things. We, you know, we're thinking, we're thinking, I don't like that brother. I don't like that sister. I don't, you know, so many bad things are going through our minds. Some people are even thinking of killing each other. You know, I'm going to kill that person. I'm going to, so many thoughts are going in our minds or, you know, through, in and through our minds. And, uh, that is what happens. You see, when we are born, we are pure. This is, imagine this is your brain, all right? It's basically pure. Your brain is pure when you're born. And as you keep growing, what happens is the brain now begins to be filled up. It's, it's, it begins to be corrupted. This is corruption. This could be pornography, this could be jealous, this could be anger, this could be, you know, all sorts of negative things. Just name them. The mind is beginning to become corrupted. And uh, the mind, children are innocent. We're all innocent at one point. But, you know, as we go along, now we are corrupted. Now our mind is being corrupted. And all sorts of things go in our minds. And... Uh, um, you know, a little bit of uh, jealousy is going in there. A little bit of uh, anger is going in there. A little bit of uh, uh, resentment and bitterness is going in there. And that's your mind. Now, if your mind was pure and clean, but look at what is in your mind right now. There's lots of stuff going on in your mind there. Uh, a little bit of, uh, uh, just a moment here. Uh, a little bit of, you know, uh, adultery and all sorts of things happening, going in your mind, uh, thinking about all sorts of things that you're going to do to your neighbor, to your friend, people that you don't like, and so on and so forth. So, so now your mind, the devil has filled your mind with all sorts of corruption. So your mind now is full of corruption. So you can imagine, everywhere you go, you're, you know, you're walking with terrible thoughts. The thoughts are in your brain. I'm going to kill that person. I don't like that person. You know, you're jealous. Even when they, somebody gets something good, you're jealous. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I hold back this from them. So all this is in your brain. And this is not good. But we are saying that the way you free your mind from bad thoughts, again, number one connected to number two, you feed on the word of God. You replace the bad thoughts with the good thoughts. And the good thoughts are going to come from the word of God. The scripture says, now faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. We hear the word of God. We replace the bad thoughts or the negative thoughts with the word of God. So now imagine. All right, let's do this. I want you to imagine with me that this is the word of God. 
imagine with me that this is the word of God. Let me just get one volunteer to come. Uh, imagine that this is the word of God. All right? This is the word of God. Sorry, no, this, is the, this is not the word of God. This is the word of God. All right? This is the word of God. He's going to hold. That's the, your, this is your brain that has been filled with all sorts of filth. Jealous, anger, resentment, bitterness. I don't like people. I don't, you know, all sorts of things. Uh, negative things in there, uh, stealing and so, all sorts of things. Now, this is the word of God, okay? This is the word of God and we're saying the way you free your mind, the way you release your mind, the way you take back your mind to purity, we are protecting the mind because what the devil is looking for, he's looking for your mind. He's not looking for your car. He's not looking for your money. He's not looking for your house. He's not looking for your wife or your husband. He's looking for your mind. So how do we protect the mind? All right, go back to number one again. We feed the mind with the word of God. All right, and we're saying this is the word of God. So we begin to feed the word of, the word of God. Uh, we begin to feed your mind with the word of God. But you see, you feed a little bit of the word of God it still makes no big difference, all right? It still makes no big difference. There's the resentment and the jealousy is still in there. Then you wake up tomorrow morning, you feed a little bit more. It's still right over there. It's been just stirred up a little bit, but it's still right over there. Then you wake up tomorrow and feed a little bit more, all right? It's still in there. Uh, but you, you have to be consistent and you have to keep feeding your mind so that you can free your mind from all these uh, thoughts that do not glorify God. This is how you protect your mind, by feeding the word of God continuously. So you feed and feed and feed. And as you keep feeding, the negative or the bad keeps going out. As you keep feeding, it goes. 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 As you keep feeding it goes it goes it goes it goes it goes hallelujah amen let's look at this now we fed with the word of god and all the junk is gone and the brain or the mind goes back to purity and you know you don't stop just because it's pure now just because you're you know every time you're walking around you're thinking all oh, things are possible all the time, even when you find difficult, you're, you're walking and saying, you know what? God, my God, you're in luck. My God shall supply all my needs according to, his according to his riches in glory. You're doing that because your mind is now being fed with the word of God. As you keep moving around and you, you know, your mind is like this and you keep believing there is hope for tomorrow. You know, health is on its way. Uh, provision is coming. You don't stop feeding because the enemy still comes back the enemy can still easily come back uh, can easily come back and put a little bit of dirt in your brain but you know what you keep feeding just because you're thinking right now does not mean that you stop you keep feeding and keep feeding and as you keep feeding as you saw the water flowing out that meant that you that means that's a sign to show that your mind is racing towards freedom your mind is racing towards freedom thank you very much thank you very much james your mind is racing towards freedom. Um, so, how do you free your mind from bad thoughts? You free your mind from bad thoughts again by filling it up with the word of God, with the promises in the word of God. And then number three, focus your mind on the right thing. Focus your mind on the right thing. Number one, focus your mind on the right thing. Focus on Christ. Focus on Christ. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3 says, you will keep him in perfect peace, who all who trust in you. You will keep in you will you will keep him in perfect peace, all who trust in you, and all whose thoughts are fixed on you. All whose thoughts are fixed on you. You will keep them in perfect peace. All whose mind is fixed on you. You will keep him in perfect peace. And that word peace there is also the word shalom. All right, there is. The blessings, the unlimited blessings of God, when we begin uh, to focus on Christ, then the unlimited blessings of God will continue to flow in our lives. We'll, we have no anxiety. We have no worry. Why? Because our minds are on Christ. So, number three, I'm saying focus your mind on the right thing. 
And the right thing to do is to focus on Christ. Now, when you are faced with a challenge, if your mind is focused on Christ, this is how you will deal with it. What would Christ do in such a situation? Would he panic? What would he do? Would he run away? Exactly the way he would respond is exactly the way you should respond. Now, number, number two, under, under, under focusing your mind on the right thing, number one, we're saying focus on Christ. Focusing on Christ is the right thing to do. Number two, focus on others. Don't focus on self. Because when we are faced with challenges, usually the thing is, you focus on yourself. You feel sorry for yourself. You feel sad for yourself. Everything is about you. All right? You begin to have a pity party. But in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 4, the scripture says, Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. Don't look out for only your, your interests only, but it says, take an interest in others too. And I have come to know that every time you take an interest in others, you will be encouraged. Sometimes you think that you are going through so many challenges. You think that, you know, I'm the only one. This is so difficult. But the moment you begin to take interest in others, the moment you begin to visit others, then you're going to find people going through harder situations that you're going through. The moment you leave that house or that home, you will be encouraged to say, you know what? The challenge I have is too small. That brother is really going through a hard time. How can I help them? So all of a sudden right now, focus has gone off you and focus is on another person. Your mind is not thinking about how terrible your challenge is, but your mind is thinking, how can I help that brother? How can I help that sister? And that's my experience. I do have challenges. But many times when I reach out to the people in our congregation and I, when I visit them and I see what they're going through, I, 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 I look back at my own challenge and I'm thinking, you know what? My challenge is too small. My challenge is too tiny and God can be able to deal with it. But I want to see how I can be able to help that brother and sister. So to focus on others also uh, is the right thing to do. Uh, it will help to uh, liberate your mind. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24. It says, And let us consider how we may spar one another on, uh, toward love and good deeds. So we never get tired of doing good deeds. Even when we're going through hard times, the scripture didn't say when you're going through uh, good times and you spar one another to do good deeds or towards good deeds. No, uh, it's all the time we are encouraging one another towards uh, doing good deeds, towards practicing good things. So anybody that thinks about another person will always be victorious in life. Anybody that thinks about another person will always be victorious in life. Now we do it opposite. We're always thinking about ourselves. And we think that when we think about ourselves, then we're going to receive victory. No, 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 no. When we begin to think about others, then we receive victory. All of a sudden, faith will come up in us. Strength will come up in us. Because again, now we are seeing what we're going through as small. And what the other person is going through is quite big. And they need our help. Hallelujah. So... Let's think about one another. And th that's a good thing to do. Now, the other last thing there is that we said, number one, under focus your mind on the right thing. We said, focus on Christ. It's the right thing to do. Number two, focus on others. And then number three, focus on eternity. Focus on eternity. Now, your, the problems that you're going through will not be there forever. Where we're going... All right, the Bible says, scripture says, this world is not our home. And where we are going, there are no problems. We're just going to be enjoying ourselves. All right, we'll be walking on the streets of gold. Focus on eternity. My friend, whatever you do, have an eternal perspective. Knowing that, you know, we're going to a better place. What we have here is but temporary. It's just but for a moment. Focus on eternity. I may be going through luck right now, but you know what? When I get to heaven, I don't know whether we're going to eat food in heaven. But if we're going to eat food in heaven, there'll be food in plenty. There'll be no luck. I don't know whether we're going to need money. Most likely not. But if we're going to need it, it will be there in plenty. 
uh, you know, definitely we're not going to need rent. Because Jesus said, for I go to prepare a place for you. He says, in my father's house are quite a number of rooms. So there'll be no rent. Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? So all these challenges that keep bombarding right, us right now, when we focus on eternity, we are encouraged to go through them. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2. It says, set your minds on the things above. Wow, that's powerful. Set your mind on the things above, not on earthly things. Why? Because earthly things are just but for a moment. But when we set our minds on the things above, you know, these are things that will never vanish. They will never, they will never go away. The things above, things above. Let's have that eternal perspective. And I promise you that we will go through this life victorious. The challenges may come, but as we set our minds on things above, we'll be able to overcome. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. It says, However, as it is written, What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. God has prepared amazing things things for those who love him and you and i love god i want to promise you my friend my brother and my sister god the scripture has said no eye has seen your eye has not yet seen your eye has not yet seen your ear has not yet heard your mind has not yet conceived what god is preparing for you god is preparing amazing things for us paul says these light afflictions cannot compare to the glory that is awaiting for us. The glory is coming and the glory is at hand. God has amazing things for us. And uh, as I have been sharing with you, uh, keep the faith. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. You know, there are three things I've really covered in this whole uh, series. I've basically talked about faith and in talking about faith, I've talked about love. And in talking about love, I've talked about hope. And the scripture says, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 13, it says, And now abide faith, hope, and love. He says, these three, and he says, but the greatest is love. And I covered a little bit of love in there when I said, you know, focus your mind on others. Love your neighbor as you love yourself, even in this season. Let not everything just be about you, but focus on your neighbor. So now abide these three things, faith, hope, and love. And so as we conclude this sermon series, I want to encourage you to keep the faith. I want to encourage you to keep the hope. And I want to encourage you to keep the love. Keep the faith, love God, and make sure that... Uh, you believe that the best is yet to come. Study his word. Keep the hope. Christ is coming again someday. The blessed hope for us as Christians to take us to our real home. Keep the hope. But also keep the hope knowing that again the best is ahead of us. And then keep the love. Keep the love. Love God and love others. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you right now, wherever you are. As we've been going through this series, I'm sure that you've been encouraged. And again, if you've been encouraged, please drop a comment in the comment section. Let us know how you have been blessed. We want to continue to make sure that we pray for you, that we serve you, all right? that we believe together with you. Uh, even if you have maybe a prayer request, drop it in the comment section right over there. We'll be, our team will be sure to be able to pray with you. But I want to pray for you right now, wherever you are, watching us from your living room, from your car, from uh, your workplace, um, different parts of the world. Wherever you are, I want to pray for you right now. And the first category of people I want to pray for you, pray for uh, those that don't know Christ. Because receiving Christ is the first step to being a prisoner of hope. So let me pray for you. And if you're that person, you're saying, I want to accept Christ. Say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, 
I thank you for my life. I come before you. I've done many things wrong. Come into my life and come into stay. From this, on life, uh, from this point onwards, I am your son, I am your daughter. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, you're most welcome into the kingdom of God and you're most welcome to be a part of the Community Life Church family. If you are in the Kampala area, we are located in Natete. And once we go back to corporate worship, please make sure that you come. We want to make sure that we help you. Uh, drop us a comment in the comment section and we'll make sure that we follow up on you. We'll give you a ring and we'll help you to grow. But if you are in any other part of the world and you can't join us, I would like to encourage you to find a great church. Join that great Bible best uh, church, a Bible teaching church. Join that church and I know that you'll be helped to grow. And then lastly, I want to pray for all of us that whatever we have learned in the past eight weeks, we'll be able to put into practice. So let's pray right now. Hallelujah. Hearts long for Hallelujah. Presence, Lord. Let us become. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. So, Father, I pray for every man and woman. Lord, wherever they are watching from, we thank you for hope. We thank you because you've given us hope. In this hopeless situation, you've given us hope. Thank you for life. Thank you for Jesus. We thank you, O oh God that you have sustained us and you've given us life. So I pray for every man and woman wherever they are. I pray that God, they will keep the hope. They will keep the faith. They'll keep the love. They'll keep the love. They'll keep the faith. They'll keep the hope. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that God, you will help every man and woman and every child, oh God, in the season that they will not lose hope. I ask, oh God, that they will continue, all of us will continue to believe in you. We'll continue to focus on your word. We'll continue to protect our minds. Our minds will be stayed on you. So I pray for all those precious people, wherever they are. Maybe, Lord, they have uh, been affected in one way or another. I pray that, God, they will come out of this season. I pray that, Lord, they will put their trust in you. Now I pray, Lord, for uh, the different uh, ones of oh God. I pray for their workplaces. I pray that, God, people will not be able to lose their jobs in the name of Jesus. Those that are the verge of losing their jobs, they will not perform a miracle in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for businesses that people will be able to excel in their businesses in the name of Jesus. Even those businesses that have been put to a standstill, I ask, oh God, you are a God who can be able to redeem the time. I pray that you'll be able to redeem the time on their behalf, even the students of God, you'll be able to redeem. So I pray for a special blessing. Let signs and wonders, miracles happen in people's lives. We thank you. And may the blessing of Abraham and the blessing of Jacob and the blessing of Isaac rest upon your lives. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you. May he be gracious to you. May he guard your heart. And the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your heart now and forevermore amen and amen and amen well thank you so much for joining us and i'm looking forward to being with you next week god bless you have yourselves a lovely week well i want to welcome you back from the sermon i pray and hope that you've been blessed now as a culture of generosity we celebrate giving in this tough time the lord calls us to even be more faithful that as we trust in him he will carry us through. I am reminded of two stories in the Bible. The, the specific stories that I want to tell you about is a story of the widow who helped Elijah. The Bible tells us that she didn't have enough 
but she shared with the man of God. And the Bible tells us that the Lord was with her through that difficult season. And also we are reminded of the story of Isaac, how he sowed during the season of famine. This might be a season of famine for you, but we are reminded that by the time the famine was over, Isaac had more than enough. So, you can continue giving through the following avenues, either through the mobile money or through the account number as displayed on the screen. This is what your generosity does.